Hi and welcome to part two of VCV Rack Fundamentals. This time it's the VCO, the Voltage Controlled Oscillator. That's the voice of our synth. And here we are in VCV Rack. I'm going to right click anywhere in the rack and we'll find our module browser. Now you can see there's lots of modules. I've added all of the free ones and I've purchased some as well. But in this case I'm looking for an interface. I'm going to type interface into the search field. I want both a MIDI to CV converter, and that's going to change our musical notes, either from a MIDI keyboard or from our QWERTY keyboard, into a control voltage, which can then move through the synthesizer. And I'm also going to add the Audio 8 audio interface. And that's how we're going to monitor the signals, either through our headphones or speakers. On the MIDI to CV converter, I'm going to choose the computer keyboard, and I'm going to use that to play the notes. On the audio interface, you might choose your built-in output, or it may be that you have an audio interface that you can select from this list. I need to choose Telestream because I'm screen capturing. You can see on these two devices that some of the sockets have a black box around them with white text, and the other sockets have black text and no box. This is a system that many manufacturers use. And in this case, the black boxes are the outputs, and those without the boxes are the inputs. OK, I'm going to add a VCO. Now, if I were to type VCO into the search field, then many options come up. And for the purposes of these tutorials, I'm going to focus on the fundamental modules. So I'm going to type fundamental in to the search field. I'm going to choose VCO1. These units, the fundamental units, are included with VCV without any additional adding of third-party units on the website itself. I'm also going to add a scope. That's another fundamental module, so it's come up in the same search as before. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have a voltage-controlled oscillator. It's a voice, and it has a number of waveforms that we can employ. Let's take a look at the waveform outputs at the bottom of the VCO. So I'm going to patch the sine wave output into our audio interface, left and right. And I'm also going to place this into the scope. And you can see that that's quite a smooth waveform. I'll lower the frequency, just so it's easier us to view it. And now we can see that shape really clearly. So that's quite a smooth round shape. Let's move on to the next shape. This is our triangle waveform. And you can hear that has more harmonic content. It's kind of brighter, more aggressive. Let's move on to the sawtooth waveform. And you can see almost like a shark fin shape there. And again, that's a kind of buzzing sound. It's tonally very different to the two waveforms we heard before. Let's take a look at the final one, and this is a square wave. Now it is possible to have an analog or digital model on each of these VCOs. And you can see that in the digital model of the pulse width square wave, for instance, it just changes the top and bottom edges slightly. That having a more square digital feel, that analog one being a little more sawtoothed. There's a slight tonal difference between the analog and digital model. Now at the moment, we're changing the pitch by winding up and down this frequency dial. You can see that it goes from oscillating several hundred times a second into the thousands or tens of thousands times a second. But we might want something more musical than this. And that's where our MIDI to CV converter comes in very useful. So we can use something called the volts per octave system for tracking our note pitch. 
So you can see on the MIDI to CV converter, I'm going to take the volts per octave and patch that to the volts per octave input of the VCO. And now when I play a note on my computer keyboard, we get a distinct change in pitch, which we can hear is musical. So we have fine tuning adjustment. This changes the pitch, but in finer resolution than the large frequency dial. And this can be quite useful for a drifting pitch, which can give very pleasing results um, within a synthesizer when you're building a voice. A detuned pitch beating against another oscillator, which is also detuned, can give you a really complex timbre. We also have a parameter marked P width, and this is pulse width. Now this does apply to the current waveform that we're listening to, the square. Let's take a look at that and a listen. We're changing the width of that cycle from something very narrow to something very wide. And you can see that we get a kind of phasing effect as I move that dial. And again, alternating that parameter with another control voltage can give us a really pleasing phasing effect. Just to be clear, Let's attempt that on another waveform and see if it has any effect. No, the pulse width is only available for the square wave. So why don't you take a moment to build that patch or load the example patch, play around with patching in the various waveforms, take a look at them on the scope, move the frequency around, perhaps adjust the square wave with its pulse width and get a feel for the different types of tone that you can get from each of those four waveforms. And I'll see you in the next part when we introduce a filter.